Hey guys, welcome back to the next video. If you are new to the channel, welcome. This is Bishop Welsh Tech, and today we have the Sapphire RX 9060 XT Pulse graphics card review. Should you buy it in 2025? Let's find out, shall we? Okay, so when it comes to the engine clocks, that will be boost as well, game boost. Now, the boost clock does go up to 3290 megahertz with a game clock up to 2700 megahertz now for the stream processors it does have 2048 the compute unit does have 32 CUs with third gen RT and second gen AI accelerators the infinity cache does have 32 megabytes with ray trace uh, accelerators at 32 it does have a accelerators at 64 the memory size and bus is 16 gigs of gddr6 with a 128 bit bus memory clock uh, does go up to 20 gigabits effective display port display ports actually it does have maximum of three displays the resolution they say on here does go up by seven 680 by 4320 it does have also a display port 2.1 as for the outputs it does have two hdmi and one display point 2.1 the bios uh, support is a, a uefi the game index is 1440p and as for the cooler now it does have honeywell ptm 7950 thermal interface material that is on the core as well as the overall heatsink now it does have aero curve fan blades it has free flow frame defense integrated cooler module dual x cooling technology hyper t copper pcb that's 10 layers of two ounces of copper optimized composite heat pipes metal backplate sleeve bearing fans a nine phase digital power design fuse protection intelligent fan control precision fan control triax supported as well as triax boost now as for the architecture of the graphics card it is amd's brand new rdna4 architecture and i've already said what the specs are but when it comes to form factor it's a two and a half inch 2.3 slot and when it comes to power consumption it does uh, consume up to 170 watts and the minimum power supply uh, recommendation is uh, 450 watts as for the system i used for specifically for testing it is on my am5 platform it is an amd ryzen 7900 with 32 gigs of a pacer ddr5 it's got a b650 motherboard from msi it's also housed in the shadow base 800 fx case from be quiet it's got a thousand watt co-link power supply and obviously it's definitely okay for both of these specific graphics cards now as for the initial testing i've done three different types of tests i've done 1080 1440 and 4k resolution now this isn't a head-to-head -head between these two cards but i'm only really saying the performance of the 9060 xt i'm only saying that but the performance on the graphs will have both of them on there so you guys can see the differences for yourselves now i've done different types of games far cry 6 starfield indiana jones hogwarts legacy and Call of Duty 6 and also as for the resolutions they're all native resolutions no upscaling nothing's been uh, enabled there and they're also all running on high settings so for Far Cry 6 the FPS max on the 60 the 9060 XT was 199 FPS this is a 1080p with a 1% low of 122 FPS now, as for Starfield, the FPS was 87 with a 1% low of 78. Indiana Jones, the FPS was 158 with a 1% low of 96. Hogwarts Legacy, the FPS was 140 with a 1% low of 102. Call of Duty 6, the FPS was 275 with a low of 1% uh, low of 86. Now, 1440p resolution same thing run the exact same types of tests now this time for the rx 9060 xt at 1440p high resolution 
at a uh, high setting sorry at native resolution now for far cry 6 the fps was 188 these are the averages and the one percent low was 112 starfield 73 fps with a one percent low of 64 Indiana Jones, the 114 FPS with a 1% low of 99. Hogwarts Legacy, the FPS was 94 with a 1% low of 70 FPS. And the Call of Duty 6 was the FPS was 161 with a 1% low of 109. And then when it comes to 4K benchmarking, trust me, it's not very pretty, but still. Far Cry 6 did actually do well in this test at the fps was 84 with a one percent low of 74 starfield the fps was 40 with a one percent low of 35 indiana jones was the fps of 57 with a one percent low of 54 and hogwarts legacy the fps was 46 with a one percent low of 39 and then call of duty 6 the FPS was 103 with a 1% low of 56 FPS. Okay then, so what do you think of that? Now, yes, this is definitely faster than the 7600 XT. Considering that this is basically, this one is the replacement for that. It's quite amazing, quite frankly. This one doesn't even draw as much power because this one only uses a single 8-pin, where that one does have a uh, two eight pin connectors the overall design of course is all changed as well they've uh, changed the fans the overall look the back plate and such now i didn't include the 9070 because these two are a completely different price bracket and quite frankly it wouldn't be really fair because this isn't actually uh aimed at that price range this is aimed at 350 pound with the 7600 XT when it first came out was £400, so these two are actually around the same price. That is why I only included these two. Now, as you can see, the design of both are completely different, and this card of £350, it's a little bit pricey, but what I will say is if you want it for 1080p or 1440p, these aren't 4K uh, gaming cards, just so you're aware, then yes, they're okay. We, uh, they're Obviously, with the, the 9060 XT, it does come in two variants, 8 gig and 16 gigs. Don't get the 8 gig. Don't buy it. Don't even bother. There's no point in 2025. Games are starting to utilize a lot more VRAM these days, and trust me, you will end up hitting a bottleneck because... Once the VRAM on your GPU is saturated or has been used, then it reverts back to the memory on your, well, your system memory. And trust me, that's a lot slower than the VRAM that's on here. So what do you take from this? Well, if you're with a 7600 XT or sometimes a bit more, it obviously it's going to be up to you whether you want to upgrade it or not. But if you're coming from an older generation card, this is definitely a good up upgrade option. But if you've already got a 9070 or a 9070 XT, then really there's no point. But this is a very good 1080 to 1440p sweet, pot, sweet spot uh, gaming card. And whether you agree with me or not, that's up to you. But there's my personal opinion. And if you want to buy it, I will leave links down below. Big thank you for Sapphire for sending out graphics cards for me to review. And as always, I hope you guys have a fantastic week and weekend ahead of you. Don't forget to subscribe because I've got absolute tons of stuff coming. And as always, this is Richard Welsh Tech. Good. Bye.